morning is Saturday, 6th of October. He's dealing with a, a waning gibbous moon. It stands high in the west, probably in Gemini. And then, just some, <laughs> these are some funky clouds. Go from this pattern, break right here. You know, out of this, we've got a gap of the blue sky. And then these little cirrus tufts. Very curious. And then up here, another uh, change in cloud form, I suppose. This guy, next to this guy, I mean, side by side, and then right next to it, we've got these peaking cirrus. So they look like you're in the middle of a wave form with the tops of a, of a pond or a, uh, a body of water, and they're peaking. And then off to this kind of serious clumping. And then we've got this other grand serious with the very sharp edges to it in different waves. So there's just something else that's sparking the formation of these clouds. There's something else. It's either etheric or it's electrical. It's one or the other. One or the other. That's kind of what we're seeing this morning. This is what is kind of cool in my book. It's just these different three different kinds of clouds right here. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three. Let's we'll see how the day unfolds. Coming up on 11 o'clock, and you can see one, one little trail rolling through here. And, uh, you know, once you end up inside the storm, and that's where we are with the cold front uh, off of the south in the Four Corners area, which is to my southwest, about 150 miles. Snow on the Front Range or on two ranges over. We've got snow from Colorado Springs northward to, to Laramie, Wyoming. Cold, cold air in, in, uh, in Nebraska with frost covering nearly that entire state. And the cold into northern Kansas. Uh, nearly all of Iowa is, is below freezing this morning. And then light snows in, uh, in the Dakotas, or at least uh, uh, like the Black Hills of the Dakotas. There's a little bit of the trail left. And so once you get into the heart of the storm, the uh, chemtrail planes literally crash. The count goes way, way down, probably by 95%. And then we're left, you know, in the storm. You'll still get the low-flying planes that are doing the etheric engineering, but that's about it. Rare are the chemtrails in, in, uh, inside the heart of a storm. And that may change as we get a little more moisture rolling in here uh, in the next, uh, uh, by the, towards the latter part of the day. But we'll see. And so we're due for our first hard freeze in the San Luis Valley, which is every bit of five weeks behind normal. It's like the seasons continue to be shifted uh, to, to forward in time. All right, uh, we got the time lapse running. It's kind of gone clear. We're looking off to the south, so we'll watch that. All these clouds that are off to the south, and you'll see them on time lapse, although they're going to be towards the bottom third of the screen, are all these fall street clouds where you have some something that gets them excited at the top and then the ice crystals or the precipitate then falls out or streaks out, out at the bottom. And so they look like upside down pyramids. And that's what all of this is. And it's just uh, the leading edge of a band and the clouds get somewhat thicker off towards uh, New Mexico and then westward towards Utah. But this is all this cirrus or fall streak formed clouds. And so we've got fall streak clouds off to the south. Turn back towards the house. And then I see this guy, one of the weather planes, you know, just working silently off towards the west. No trails. Just low and slow. Checking things out. Maybe with his organ accumulators on, maybe with the dispersers on, I don't know. But he's there. Regular commercial traffic would not be at this altitude. It would be much higher. And moving at 500 miles an hour or 550 miles an hour, this guy is too slow. Too slow and he's too low. He's probably at 23,000 feet or so. And so the planes are still up there, like we just said. 
They just when they're in the storm, they're not trailing nearly as frequently. Waking up to some uh, seriously cold uh, wet weather across the upper Midwest uh, this morning. These are lows. Big Piney, Wyoming at 17, 25 at Casper. You've got snow along the Front Range, snow at 33 in Denver, uh, 31 in Colorado Springs, 34 in Pueblo under cloudy skies. <clears throat> the cold and the frost with these north winds continue all the way through Iowa, with frost into, into Illinois and Indiana. So that cold air is plunging southward, pretty much as expected with the center of the high pressure in the southeastern uh, Montana. Uh, the other low that I'm close to is this one winding up here, and it is a much, much drier scenario, still with relatively fall-like weather in here. Well, beautiful fall weather in here. It's dry but colder. And now as this low tracks this way, then the colder air will rush in here, where I am in Colorado, upslope. Clouds and conditions, cloudy skies, 49, 45 in Midland, 41 at Lubbock. Actually, Midland's down here. Um, and then uh, Amarillo up to the north. So this cold weather making it all the way to the Texas Gulf Coast this morning with Houston now in a north wind here, Beaumont at 64, and then the, the humid conditions more on the Gulf of, uh, of Mexico on the other side of the boundary. Still with some streaks of high clouds. Um, let's back out here, get the wide view. And here's the edge of that Arctic air, as you can see with the clouds condensing uh, up along the mountains through New Mexico, uh, through Colorado. You can see that sharp boundary where that moisture, that moisture just cannot make it across the mountain ranges to, uh, to impede upon uh, on, the, on the other side of the ranges. So it's one of the rays that uh, those remain protected from the chilly weather. This is Arizona. Where we have lots and lots of chemtrails once again and as I've been saying for a couple of days until this low pressure system that sits off the west coast this guy here finally is able to move inland and then through on this north on, on the southeastern side of it we're going to see these trails this is going to be a constant feature for days to come and where are we now we're coming up on on 18z on Saturday the 6th dry air is is the darker is actually the brighter browns and then it goes to the browns and right in here is where we often see the chemtrails show up it's in this part of the moisture scale and you can see that happen across Arizona you can see this little stripe 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 stripe, stripe. and that's the uh, that's the chemtrail action there'll be some out in here in the heart of this low pressure system as well so we uh, look a bit farther back east we see just this massive shield of very cool cool October like weather a couple of holes here and here and then off the east coast and still with the unsettled uh, almost November like conditions persisting with a pair of holes with the front coming out from uh, from beneath or between those two holes uh, as we move through Quebec all right take a look outside see what's going on out in that direction in the upper air analysis again Saturday morning 6th of October we have the low off the coast of California and with the trails here they like to work the leading edges of these high pressures this curve here has been responsible for the snows the upslope snows that have been existing tonight or the, over the last uh, 18 hours from Rapid City through portions of Wyoming now moving through Colorado and into northern New Mexico and we're still with a strong strong high off the coast of British Columbia arcing the jet stream up through Alaska and then plunging the cold air deep into the heart of the country and this situation continues through Monday low off the coast trails likely on the southern portion of of this lower uh, part of the jet stream with the polars going up and north and it's going to remain chilly if not downright cold this almost looks like another snow event uh, absolutely another snow event for a Monday night Tuesday morning across the upper Mississippi Valley and western Great Lakes states. Finally, some rains will break out across the Siskiyous and the, and the northern and central Sierras, and then the storm slowly begins to sag south. Why? Because we have a bigger storm coming along through the Gulf of Alaska. It'll probably begin to pinch off this high, and we'll get a push of this uh, Pacific air down, and it'll displace this storm inland. And so I would suppose through the southwestern states, at least uh, we're going to see trails until until this storm finally moves on through. And you can see the jet stream taking more of a, of a straight aim at the country rather than up and over this monstrous ridge that is in place. It looks like this pattern change will get underway as we get towards the end of next week. And that should allow for some warming across the upper Midwest, but still very cool through New England as uh, we are decidedly, decidedly into the fall season.
visible imagery, North Pacific, from Weathertap. Look at the ship trails. Contrails on the marine layer of the, uh, of the atmosphere. The bottom 3,000 feet. These are not aircraft trails, these are ship trails. Ship trails leaving trails to see how this mass of atmosphere is deforming. And they display the same intent on how one trail intersects another as do the chemtrail flights. It's the same program, just with a different methodology and a different target in mind. Instead of looking at the 20, 30,000 foot layer of the atmosphere, they're looking at the bottom 3,000 feet. And this is the ship trail format, and there must be at least 200 of them out there. So this cloud's just shown up in the last few minutes. Nice rippling showing up at one end. I don't have the time lapse pointed anywhere in this direction. What's this as well? Um, so we'll see how this evolves. But usually, these kinds of clouds um, will result very, very shortly in the flight of a chemtrail plane. And more often than not, the chemtrail planes will be there before a cloud like this shows up. And now this whole other segment out here has just started to, to come together. So whatever is doing this, and you can see some of the glow, some of the iridescence in the, uh, the metallics that are up there, starting to give us a little discoloration, a bit of uh, an iridescence. That sort of takes shape, and you can see, I'm going to come back in, different wave formations all coming in on this singular point. So this cloud will likely spread very, very quickly. And uh, it won't be long before we have a plane investigated. That you can be assured. And down to the south, you can see the top of this uh, clouds of the storms all hazy. We've got a few cumulus trying to pop up above it, but it's all been disturbed. It's all been resonated to some degree. You can see where we've got this cloud maintaining its integrity, and then on either side, it's kind of fuzzy, hairy, diffuse. It is a disruptive technology, and I've pointed this out a couple of times before. And we've got a north wind as this low to our south continues to, uh, to wind up. The rippling from this extends now to the horizon. The cloud is still kind of coming together. Another little cloud forming just off the main one. And look at the texture in here. I'll zoom in a touch. You can see the holes, you can see this texture. It's just a little odd for what should be a smooth cloud, but this is growing very quickly. Very quickly. Iris down a touch. Come in and see if we can't tease out some of the colors while I get in the shade. It just kind of darkens the whole thing. <clears throat> Nevertheless, that crowd cloud has grown quickly just just in the moments that I've been shooting it. I can't get this up here to my eye and head, catch the edge. But there will certainly be a plane here before too much longer. They can't resist. They just can't resist phenomena like this. Alright, 25 minutes later can see what this cloud has, has become. And it's um, kind of something else. It's not smooth on the edges like you would expect a true lenticular to be. We've got our indents, our hole like formations there. All of the, uh, we used to call it like a chem glow. It's all this chemical mixture that makes up these clouds in combination with uh, the rainbow effect of the water molecule. And it becomes, you know, just shy of something pretty kind of cool, spectacular color-wise. But when we come out and look at the edges, it's not smooth at all, like you would expect a lenticular type cloud to be. There's all of this texture. And that tells us, and, and look at the gridding in here. This is pretty cool. Ripples coming in this way. And you'd think that the cloud would be advancing this way. In fact, it may be coming north, 
and, and there's another wave action going underneath this. I threw the time lapse up on this after uh, I did the last little look. So we'll see how this plays out and we go back off the trees here. And there's another round of rippling. Another round of rippling and that should be captured by the time lapse. So that'll be revealing to look at later on tonight. These waves. I should, I should do this. It's going to split into two. And this point, definitely a different behavior than this point. You can see some waves coming through here and then there's this something else. This peaking, as I like to call it. You can see how it's like disturbed water. It's peaking. Little curls or wave crests on the top. And of course the iridescent colors that are ever present. It's very different than this wave. You see some other wave action in there. Lots and lots and lots of fine scale stuff. It just has me convinced that this is dimensional and not um, not traditional technology. And two more holes just kind of shown up there. And the winds blow. All right, this wave just continues to be a a source of fascination. With multiple grids or, or tracks in through here and now it's become more like splash marks with this texture. It is so not lenticular or something from a smooth wave or cloud action. This is something very different. Very different. So, um, it's funny how where this ends, then the rippling begins. And it had extended all over through here. Let me get out of the way of the tree. What has amazed me that I have not seen a chemtrail flight go through this. That has not happened yet. And that surprises me. So it's 446. This thing has been on, I think, for every bit of two hours. This crazy cloud. Not a single plane is through it. And then I was just noticing here the little curls. Like we had one wave rolling in from the left side or from the north, running across another one. And it was creating curls on this edge. I'm just uh, just slightly stunned that we haven't had a plane go through this, but that's okay. It must mean they just have it under control. 5.22 in the afternoon and we still have this uh, lenticular-like cloud across the area and all kinds of shapes going on. We even got uh, a little bit of something at a lower level showing up here. We've got the time-lapse camera now looking to the east, so we're going to see that. I'm hearing a plane, but I'm not seeing it. Then as we look towards the west, we still have that storm across the desert southwest. I'm kind of zooming in on some, uh, some, some very interesting clouds. Right in here. Right in there. Look at this like, central meridian. I think this is very similar to what we saw overhead. Where we have this sharp edge moving in one direction. I think from what I'm seeing now is it's moving away. And so we're seeing, like with a snowplow, the clouds of this moisture kind of vaulted over this thin disk of air that is moving in that and probably this dark spot right here is its axis point. Otherwise, the north winds continue to blow into the, into the San Luis Valley, dew points in the teens, and up off the valley floor, we are going to have our first hard freeze tonight. The satellite discussion and close this up. Keep looking up, everybody. It's going up on 612, and this is what's left of, uh, of that cloud. Just a, a little cumulus. And then I, I did nothing deck of what would be termed a shallow alto cumulus. And, but there is some geometry in there. There's some ridging and there's some, some connective waves between the holes. So there's some geometry in there as there has been all day. A while ago I saw a, a plane out in here about an hour ago. And I'm just now, I haven't scanned this since it first came out, but I'm seeing a trail right here. Right through the middle of it. Look at this. This trail right through the cloud. Unbelievable. 
and um, we got this track it's kind of run through it and the plane went through it knew that center mark it knew that beginning and I don't know how long ago this plane the plane's trail was laid down but it looks like it's certainly under five minutes and it'll be under three minutes but um, boy he hit that spot perfectly and that's what I keep saying is these trails are used to surveillance surveillance here's another one he's just gone through um, gone through this rag and through here Boom, boom, right at cloud level. So this has been my, my assertion for a while, is that these planes have got tools, transmitters, collectors, etheric stirrers, they've got technology, they've got apparatuses on board, and they fly through the zones precisely. Look at the center hole here, and look at all this other texture. It's such a fine scale. It's like there's this underlying fabric that they're stimulating and this fabric reveals itself um, as a curling action or a twist or a bend essentially a spiral and then they through their technology and, and standing waves and and so forth and and the harp action will then stress this fabric of this underlying creation into the shapes that they would like and then we end up with this stuff this stuff, look at these waves running across. And then there's this center with a, a hole in it. And then ribs coming out of the sides. So there's all this underlying patterning. What's causing the patterning? Is that natural? Or is that patterning a function of the technology, a function of the waves? And so is then that patterning establishing the patterning, the responsibility of the trails. Because you can see the patterns. I mean, this is a brilliant display. You do not get this in this kind of light very often. This is, this is rare for me. And so I'm, I'm going slow through it. Um, I've seen it before, but look at this patterning. Look at these shapes. You know, so the human mind is a brilliant thing. I mean, it is one of the, the best out there. And we're supposed to recognize patterns. We're supposed to recognize shapes. We're supposed to see these things. And this will only stop once the people begin to see these things. So take some time and look. And, and sometimes the state lines can be geographical boundaries, like well, Continental that's Divides. True. That's true. But um, I've seen that. This is crazy. Burst. I mean, just the, the geometry in there is a fall streak situation right there with the, uh, the, the cloud no, focused the in the center. Look at that double imprint look, here. Look at, so, it pulled, so it pulled this end of this thing out. Let me come out. Oh, it did. That is over there now. Wow, and when I um, look like at it. It's a bullet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a coat coming out of the whole thing, yeah. yeah. And up here. But it does, it looks like you're in the wind bay. We've got a center hole there. Actually, there's two of them, a darker one up front. And it probably is the beginning of multiple. Um, I guess waves are they look like holes, but they would be anodes. If a node is a is a high a low pressure, then an anode would be a high. So, wow, this is crazy. It is chilly, isn't it? Okay, I'll be in it a bit. Nice out here, though. Thanks for having a party. <laughs> You're welcome, Sue. <laughs> scale in there. Fine ripples. Look at those little guys. I mean, patterning is 
It's crazy. Look at those, all those right angles. I mean, and then, we, I mean, we have larger sets of holes. Let's see if I can open a steady ride in through here. And then a grid pattern, then another set of waves or holes down below. Sorry guys, it's a little windy. But look at this. This is just, come on guys. Where are the weathermen? Do they not look? Or is it just that they're not seeing? I don't know which. But I mean, start looking guys. That's all we ask is that you start looking. There's two holes again. On a plate. This is a very similar shape to what I see on the timeless photography, but on a massive scale, where you have these little spokes out here um, that are radiating away from this this high point. This this uh, let's just call it a thunderstorm because I want to take that analogy. Um, that this guy is is the thunderhead. Out in front of it, we have two downward depressions. These downward depressions have to have upward motion somewhere. And the question is, how nearby will that other part of the wavelength show up? And so what we have are these spikes out front orienting these holes that are downward spirals, but their counterpart, the upward spirals, will be behind them. And if you can align these upward spirals, you're going to enhance the intensity of thunderstorms and thereby hurricanes. And, you know, the applications are, 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 are only limited by the imagination. But... This is, this is a, f a fundamental geometry, uh, geometry I see, the two holes associated with one upward movement, where the upward movement is then focused as the two, two counterparts to those downward holes are then combined. Was that just jibber-jabber to most of you, or did it actually make a little sense? Look at this. It goes back to Boyd Bushman's work. Look at this guy here. see another plane. Oh, there's been one. There's been one. Um, this guy. This is the older one. And this guy. No, no, that's been there. Oh, more waves are showing up in here. East-west waves. See where the pattern changes? Right here. Right here at this spot. To this side, you have a feathered appearance. On this side, you've got a congestive or like a, a cumulus appearance. On this side of, let me back out of that feature. Right in through here. So, plane had gone here. And then we see the turbulence that's introduced. And this is why the chemtrails are important, is that the chemtrails let them see how these kind of turbulences on many different scales deform the trail. Like this little ridge here is, is the trail, and you can see how it essentially fades away inside this turbulence. It's lost its definition. On this other side, it's, it's, it's back and intact. And so on a chemtrail, they'll leave a path this point would be changed somehow. This point would disappear. It would be brighter. It would be smeared to one side. Uh, we would have the powders dispersing up and down or in an augering fashion or sheared and roll over. I don't know. But that's why they lay the trails down, is so that they can see how they deform through zones of turbulence. This zone of turbulence is different than this zone, which is different than this zone. And what's curious is I don't even think this trail was left as a trail. It was simply the existence of the plane being there. And that did enough to shake out the condensation that we're seeing here as the mark. And this is, this is a special occurrence. This is special. Um, this, is, this is unique and, and rare uh, to have it happen in this kind of light. We have the low sun angles, but I cannot. You can see the texture. This is this this becomes golden.
because it's so illustrative of the work that's being done in the skies. And you can see the lines, you can see this patterning. And then you can apply this to looking at the visible satellite imagery that I show you. It all repeats, it's just a question of the scale. It all repeats. Not at the end, we have a plane. I've been to nine dimes to dollars at Southwest. But he'd, he would mark, in this situation, he's essentially coming up this line. Tra train to plane flame. And so they're ex expecting, or up until some set of point, uh, amount of time has passed, that these lines will come out and extend this. The other option is that they'll introduce some kind of disturbance wave and then it'll just gradually eat away at this and the whole thing will fade away. I've seen both happen. But when the plane shows up, something's about to change. about lost the plane there. Kind of went dark. And this trail faded away. So maybe it'll be intermittent. But when they show up, something changes. This kind of a situation, when they're here, something happens. And he truly is just on, see, he's, he's kind of, he's on the edge of this guy. This is what he's interested in. Is this? So he's right along the edge. Yeah, there's the orange belly. done. So task accomplished. Task accomplished. Alright, I'm going to get some warm on. It's getting chilly. But see, this is just manifested. This was not here. This was not here. So something hit. Something's something's impacting this. And he's still not leaving a trail. Alright everybody. What a show today. Thanks for watching. There's another one. Off in the distance. It's a similar kind of trail to uh Actually, this one's a little longer than the one of the southwest west of flight that flew overhead. But it just continues on. The geometry and, and, and the uh, juxtapositioning of patterning is um, unmistakably intelligent. Unmistakably intelligent. And this is uh, a change of view that we're going to have to make is that what we thought was once chaos is patterned, shows an intelligence, shows an intent. And this is what has changed in the weather today, is that there's a different game out there. We're not guessing, we're not forecasting what the planet is doing. There's an intelligence here. And this is what we're leading with. Look at this. Look at this. It's like the bottom of a, uh, of a rudder 
of a boat, a keel, two eyes in the opening. We've got our uh, mid midway point across, but then it keeps changing. Look at this. All these holes. What are we looking at here? Seriously, I mean, what are we looking at? Is this all dimensional? I mean, what's, what's the impetus? Because this is not bubbling, churning air. This is not fluid. There's, a, uh, there's, an, uh, there's an impulse, there's an energy, there's a restriction, there's an enhancement, there's something going on. Just playing with the clouds. Wow. All right. Got to get back to the gathering. Look at these cubes. Look at this front. It's like the edge of boxes rolling along, flat, weeping out of the front, and then paper thin on the back. Crazy. Look at that. I mean, it's just, and what causes the connection up? Is it electrostatic? It's not a wave. Because the, the filaments, the vapor, the crystals, the, the con, what, you know, what has condensed into these clouds, granted it's full of all kinds of stuff, but it's not acting like a vapor. It's acting like there's very much something electrical going on. All right. I had to just point that out.